Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're talking about reactions. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. React to your opponent with powerful new commands in new AOS. Alongside War Scrolls and the Priority Roll, issuing commands for units to react in your opponent's turn is one of the key features of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. These have received a lethal overhaul in the new edition in the shape of the new Command Rules module. Command Points as we hinted to previously, command points are tightly controlled resource. Each player gets four command points at the start of the battle round to spend over the course of the entire round, but there are 10 commands to issue. Any command points you haven't spent by the end of the battle round are gone forever, so there's no way of hoarding them. All right, so commands, any ability which a command point costs is a command. Each player gains four command points at the start of each battle round. The underdog gains one extra command point. Each unit can only use one command in each phase. Each command can only be used one time by each army in each phase. And you must pay the command point cost to use a command. Okay, so interesting. The army composition module may also affect your command point economy. If you start with fewer auxiliary units than your opponent, you can earn one extra command point per battle round. And then finally, the underdog can harvest one extra point each round. That's the player with fewer victory points at the start of the round. This provides a powerful catching up mechanic, ensuring that games remain closely fought. Your pool of command points are an incredibly precious resource, as there are no abilities in the game that can generate additional points. Units and factions, such as the disciplined OCR Bone Reapers, which previously relied on additional command points, can look forward to the powerful new mechanics to compensate. Stay tuned for more info in the upcoming faction focus articles. What's more, the restrictions on who can issue commands are gone. Needing to use generals, totems, heroes, unit champions, and elite units to issue commands is a thing of the past. This makes using commands clear and concise, while retaining the tough choice of when to use your core offensive and defensive abilities. Okay, so interesting. I'm definitely a fan of this. I mean, it's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Removing the restriction of needing like heroes and generals to use your command point abilities makes sense. I mean, I did like before that, you know, you basically like benefited from having them and having them in certain areas, but I can understand how that might be like an unnecessary restriction. Also taking away the ability for factions to like gain additional command points and then giving the underdog one extra command point per battle round is definitely pretty cool as well. It stops people from having like too many abilities because they just have too much command point generation. And then also it's going to help to keep the games closer because obviously command points allow you to use powerful abilities. So if the person who's currently losing always gets one extra command point, it's going to help to kind of close that gap, at least in theory. So very cool changes so far. Reactions. As we've seen, everything in the new edition is an ability, including commands, which all have clear timing showing which phase they're used in. All of these commands are found in the command module, so no more hunting around to find them. Four of the ten commands are reaction abilities, which are used once you have declared an ability, but before the effect is resolved, bolstering that effect. Using abilities. The timing of an ability tells you when it can be used. When using an ability, follow these steps. 1. Declare the ability. Tell your opponent which ability is being used. If the ability has declare instructions, resolve them at this step. 2. Use reactions. Starting with the active player, the players alternate using any abilities with an appropriate reaction timing. 3. Resolve the effect. Follow the instructions in the effect part of the ability. All-out attack and all-out defense are familiar from previous editions, becoming reactions which occur once an ability, becoming reactions which occur once an attack ability has been declared. They have simple effects, making your chosen unit better on the offense or defense. Alright, so reaction, you declare an ability, one command point, all-out attack, used by the unit using the attack ability, effects add one to the hit roll for an attack made as part of the attack ability. This also affects weapons that have the companion weapon ability. And then reaction, opponent declaring an attack ability, one command point, all-out defense, used by a unit targeted by an attack ability, effects add one to save rolls for the unit in this phase. Okay, so this is very much like stratagems in 40k. Rather than having them just be like broad-based and used whenever you want, now they're restricted to like certain times and like certain events have to happen for you to be able to trigger them. And again, I like this because it helps with balance in the game. If you can do an ability whenever you want, it's not restricted at all. If you can only do an ability when certain things trigger it, it's very restrictive. And the more restrictive it is, the easier it is to balance it, therefore making for a better game. All right, next we have at the double and forward to victory are equally simple, allowing you to get your troops exactly where they need to be in the movement and charge phases. So reaction, you declared a run ability at the double one point used by the unit using a run ability. Effect, do not make a run roll as part of the run ability. Instead, add six to the unit's move characteristic to determine the distance each model in the unit can move as part of the run ability. And then reaction, you declared a charge ability, one command point, forward to victory. Used by the unit using the charge ability. Effect, you can reroll the charge roll. So again, very cool. I like that they have basically broken everything down into abilities 
and then these are a reaction to that ability. So you declare that a unit is going to run, you then pay a command point, and you use after double, and then instead of making that run roll, you just automatically get an extra six inches. And same with the forward to victory, you declare a charge roll, and then the unit using that charge ability can re-roll that charge. So pretty straightforward. Hopefully it just keeps things like simple and flowing. They're still very powerful, but obviously limiting the command points is going to limit the amount of times that you can use one of these reactions. So it will be like a very powerful resource, something that you'll have to plan out in advance. And then on top of that, the fact that you're not able to retain any of those resources from like game turn to game turn means there's no benefit in like holding out. You're going to want to use them as the turn proceeds. So very cool. All right. So next we have new commands. Commands, on the other hand, are more reactive. There are six new revamped commands, which are used at the end of your respective phases once the active player has finished all their actions, allowing you to respond with a counterpunch and stay on top of the changing battlefield. So Rally now gives you a more flexible way of healing or returning models to your units. The scaling has improved. You can no longer get lucky on a dice and bring back two full Storm Drake guards. This is also a good example of how some of the functionality that used to be part of heroic actions, in this case heroic recovery, has been incorporated into other abilities to avoid two separate systems. All right, so rally, any hero phase, one command point, declare, pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability. Effect, make six rally rolls. Effect, make six rally rolls of a D6. For each four plus, you receive one rally point. Rally points can be spent in the following ways. For each rally point spent, heal one that unit. You can spend a number of rally points equal to the health characteristic of that unit to return a slain model to that unit. You can spend the rally points in any combination of the above unspent rally points are then lost. So pretty cool. I think this is definitely like a nerf to rally as where like previously you might had like 20 models in that unit and you would make a rally roll on a five up. So you get on average like six successful. So you might be able to bring back multiple models or heal six wounds. In this case, restricting it to six rally rolls on a four up means on average you're going to get like three successes, which means you're going to either bring back one model or heal up to three wounds. So pretty cool, but also going to stop basically like some of the like crazy rally rolls that could bring back hundreds and hundreds of points worth of units. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products, including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now, back to the video. All right, and then next we have Redeploy, Enemy Movement Phase 1 Command Point. Declare, pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability. Effect, each model in that unit can move up to a D6 inches. That move cannot pass through or end within the combat range of an enemy unit. Redeploy is back. But you'll now have to wait until your opponent has moved all of their units before using it. Okay, so that is interesting wording because it basically says enemy movement phase. And then it says declare, pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability. Effect, move that unit. It doesn't actually say anything about having to wait until your opponent has moved all their units. So maybe that's just, so not as clear as some of the other stuff. But overall, it makes sense. All right, so next we have covering fire. Enables shooting units to exert pressure, replacing an old favorite. Unleash hell. The new hotness in the charge phase is a powerful counter charge ability which costs two command points and allows for brutal interactions. Cavalry units in particular revel in this ability, but any unit that triggers this ability on the charge can become exceptionally powerful when used correctly. So enemy shooting phase, covering fire one command point. Declare, pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability. Effect, resolve shooting attacks for that unit, but all the attacks must target the nearest visible enemy unit and you must subtract one from the hit rolls for those attacks. So essentially equivalent to like Overwatch in 40k. And then counter charge, enemy charge phase, two command points. Declare, pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability. Effect, that unit can use a charge ability as if it were your charge phase. So again, we're seeing these are much more like stratagems in 40k. And a lot of them are like the same or very similar. Uh, which is good because I think stratagems are in a good place in 40k right now. So once again, we're seeing Games Workshop using the things that work in 40k to help Sigmar the same way they use things that worked in Sigmar to help in 40k. All right, next we have Magical Intervention. Permits the reacting player to cast a spell or chant a prayer in the opponent's turn, allowing for powerful counterplay or counterprey. Note that prayers have seen substantial changes to differentiate them from magic in this edition. So we'll beseech the powers that be and talk about these divine changes in due course. 
So magical intervention, enemy hero phase, one command point, declare, pick a friendly wizard or priest to use this ability. Effect, that friendly unit can use a spell or prayer ability as appropriate as if it were your hero phase. If you do so, subtract one from the casting rolls or chanting rolls made as a part of this ability. So again, we see essentially like magic overwatch, but it's at minus one, so it's slightly worse. Finally, Power Through is activated at the end of any turn, letting Rampaging Monsters and Barreling Chariots smash through infantry or scatter cavalry, dealing damage and moving through a unit, opening up new positioning opportunities. So end of any turn, Power Through, one command point, declare, pick a friendly unit that charges turn, choose this ability. Then you must pick an enemy unit in combat with it to be the target. The target must have a lower health characteristic than the unit using this ability. Effect, inflict a D3 mortal damage on the target. Then the unit using this ability can move a distance up to its move characteristic. It can pass through and end this move within the combat ranges of enemy units that were in combat with it at the start of the move, but not those of other enemy units. It does not have to end its move in combat. So very cool. You're basically like using the momentum that you have to like charge through a weaker unit, do a little extra damage, and then continue to position or like move through them. Yeah, I like it. I think all these are pretty cool. I think the dynamic is pretty cool, and it seems like they're simplifying it. You can expect other abilities in the game to alter the way that certain commands work a trigger off them in interesting ways for example stormstrike chariots can double down on this command with their celestial blaze passive triggering for an additional d3 mortal damage and granting their griff chargers an extra d6 to their movement so we see passive in purple celestial blaze effect when this unit uses the power through command inflict an additional d3 mortal wounds inflict an additional d3 mortal damage on the target and add a d6 to the distance this unit can move as part of the ability so this specific unit has a passive ability that lets it benefit specifically from that command. So again, that's like a balance thing. It's allowing Games Workshop to balance certain units and make them like more characterful or more powerful or weaker based on what they do or don't want you to do. So very cool. I'm definitely a fan of this overall. I think this is cool. Later in the week, we'll be taking a look at how battle traits work and what you can expect from battle formations, the replacement for subfactions. Okay, so we talked a little bit about that. Also, it looks like battle formations replacing sub-factions is essentially going to be Games Workshop using like detachments to replace things like chapters or sub-factions in 40k. So once again, a lot of similarities between what's working in 40k and what has worked in the past with Sigmar looks like are being transferred over into the new edition. And honestly, I am super excited about this new rewrite. So let me know what you're most excited about, what you do and don't like, if you have any questions or anything like that. Always like to hear back from you guys in the comments. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. Check out the link in the description to save 15% on Games Workshop products. And it's still early to tell, but I have a very, very strong feeling or inclination that this is going to be the best edition of Age of Sigmar ever. And I am super excited. And I'm out of here.